many people struggle to get into shaders because of the perceived difficulty level. In Unity, it's certainly become a lot more approachable, with tools like Shadercraft becoming widespread, but I still see a lot of people online who feel intimidated by shaders, particularly by people who see someone else's completed effect and wonder how they'll ever be able to make something like it. Today, I want to try and demystify part of the shader creation process by outlining the thought processes I use when I'm looking at effects in other games. This video assumes you know the basic workflow in Shadergraph, but you're not sure how to make those effects yourself. We'll look at an effect I've covered before and try to work out exactly how I would make it based only on appearance. We'll look at things like shape, colour, texture, motion, and pinpoint which bits of the shader are animated, or static, and which bits we can generate procedurally within the shader. Today, we're going to be looking at the dissolve effect. And while I've got your attention, I'd like to direct you to my brand new Discord server where you can chat directly to others who are interested in shaders, including yours truly. The link is in the description, alongside links to my Patreon and other good stuff. For more Unity tips, remember to subscribe to my channel. When the dissolve effect is not yet active, this object seems to use Unity's built-in lighting systems, along with a diffuse colour. That means that we most likely want to use a lit or PBR shader graph, and we'll need a base colour or base texture property. We can tell because we can see slight variation in the colour on the sphere where the light falls on it. That's about all there is to talk about when the dissolve is not active. We can create a new lit shader in URP by going to create shader, universal render pipeline, lit shader graph. Or, on earlier versions, it's create, shader, PBR graph. We'll add a base colour property on the blackboard, but you can just as easily add a base texture instead. When we activate the dissolve, things get a lot more interesting. The shader is capable of deleting parts of the mesh, so we're going to need a way of culling pixels. For that, the usual method is to set an alpha clip threshold below 1, and then set the alpha of the pixels we want to remove to 0. There don't seem to be any semi-transparent pixels, so I think we can use opaque rendering. Shaders use opaque rendering by default, but you can find this option in the graph settings window. Whether or not you allow semi-transparent pixels will depend on the base colours or texture you think you'll need on your objects. We can see parts of the inner shell of the object when we cut away the top, so this shader is using two-sided rendering. That's also an option found in the graph settings. Now we can think about the shape of the cutoff. It's not just setting a height level to cut off, because the surface is incredibly uneven. You can also see parts where the sections of the mesh become detached from the rest as it's fading away, so it must be using a height plus a noise offset for the cutoff. Given the existence of these floating parts, I think the noise is based on the two-dimensional UVs of the object. We can probably use simple noise, or gradient noise, although it doesn't really look like Voronoi noise. Alternatively, you could supply your own noise texture, but it's not necessary here. The noise types supplied by Shadergraph are good enough. We'll use simple noise for this demonstration, which I think I used in the original shader. Let's think about the kinds of customization we would want for an effect like this, which might not be apparent when looking at a single material. The simple noise node takes a scale input, which controls the size of the noise clouds. This seems like a natural choice for an option in the inspector. We can create a noise scale property of type float. This lets us control the granularity of the noise around the edges. We also want a way to control how far the noise pattern travels. This can be thought of as the strength of the effect, so I would add a noise strength property of type float. A lot of the thought process involved in making shaders revolves around the end user. What kinds of options and features do they want on a material using this shader? Abstracting the scale and strength into variables makes this shader far more customizable than it otherwise would be. Now that we have a noise amount, let's think about how to apply this to the cutoff height. The shader needs to be told the cutoff height by an external script, so we need to make that a property. Let's call it cutoff height and make it a float. There are several ways to apply the noise, and we'll take the easiest route. We'll multiply the simple noise by noise strength and add it to the cutoff height. 
Now we can apply the cutoff to the object. Let's use the position node in object space. This gets the position of the pixel being rendered. We want to set the alpha to 1 if the pixel is below the threshold and 0 if it is above, so pass the G component of the position into the edge pin on a step node and then pass the scale into the in pin. On the preview, you should see a noisy cutoff pattern. We can use these directly as our alpha values for the output. Now we'll come to the glowing edges. We can just plug an HDR color into the emission channel to get highlights like this, since we're using Unity's built-in lighting. We can get bright glowing edges like this by using a second cutoff threshold on the noise plus height calculation. Anything within the threshold starts to glow instead of using the base texture. An end user will want to control the thickness and the color, so add another float property called glow width and a color called glow color. That color will need to use HDR mode and you'll need to set the intensity above zero. Now take the modified noise from before and subtract the glow width, pass it into another step node using position in the edge pin like before, and invert the result using 1 minus. This should look a lot like an inverted version of the alpha values, except the cutoff Y level is lower down. Multiply it by the glow color and plug it directly into the emission output. The effect now looks a lot like our source material. A job well done. There are other things that you might notice on other effects. For instance, on my Wind Waker Water video, you'll see that the waves physically move up and down. And that means you'll need to mess with the vertex positions. I'll leave it up to you to take apart more complicated effects. I hope this has given you a glimpse into the kind of questions I ask myself when designing shaders based on something I've seen elsewhere. As always, this video was made possible by my Patreon supporters. If you want access to videos early and an exclusive member role on the Discord, have a look at the tiers available on Patreon. Until next time, have fun making shaders.